Good morning. Today we are reading Psalm one one nine, first one one three to one two eight, can be divided into two paragraphs. First one one three to one twenty, and then one twenty one to one twenty eight. Every paragraph of Psalm one one nine starts with a Hebrew alphabet, and so today we start with the fifteenth. Paragraph the fifteenth Hebrew alphabet, which is Samak. What does that represent? This alphabet symbolizes support and protection and memory. And it can. Means that reliance, protection, holding on, sustaining, sustaining, and can see the provision of the Creator. God is upholding everything, is upholding the world. So from this alphabet, we can see God's greatness. So from verse one one three to one twenty, it starts with the word, which begins with this alphabet, and that word is minded. The word double-minded, minded. And it, this word can refer to our thoughts. That's the first word in this paragraph. Maybe a better translation is: when our mind is mixed up with other things, is the ones I hate. The Hebrew double mind. It means our mind is、uh, is not pure. It's thinking about the world and thinking about God. And so the English translation is double minded. You want this, and you also want that. You want God, and you also want the world. You think about. God's ways and also、um, the world's way. He says, "But God's Torah is what I love." So the psalmist is saying that I hate those who are not focused. I hate those who sometimes think about God and sometimes the world. And there's 180 degrees difference going between two extremes, or going between two sides. And so he, he, the psalmist, decided, "I will only love your law. Why? Because you are my refuge and my shield. I put my hope in your word." The psalm is is is、uh, rely on God as his shield. For him, God's word is the shield, his refuge, protection. And what is a refuge or hiding place is our home. For Hong Kong people, it's easy to understand. If someone has a place to live or not, it's very important. We need to find a place to settle down to live, and then we we feel stable. We feel that we have security and stability. So Hong Kong people always say that as now without a shell is is bad. So the word of God is 
the place the psalmist can dwell, can can find security, can and will be protected. So the psalmist say, "You are my shelter, my protection." This alphabet semic also means protection. Remember, so he's saying that Lord, you are my protection, my refuge, my dwelling place. I give, I put all my hope in you. With you, I have hope. With you, I have a place to live. With you, I have protection. So Psalm one one five. Away from me, you evil doers, that I may keep the commands of my God. Those evil doers, they have gone astray from God's word. And he said, "Away from me, you evil doers, that I may keep the commands of my God. Do not come close to me." Be far from me. And in six one one. Uh, wording means those who do not follow God's way, get away. Do not disturb me, or, or hinder me, or block me. Get away. I want to keep God's word. You have no part with me. He turns to God. And said, "Sustain me according to your promise, and I will live. Do not let my hopes be dashed." Again, again, you can see the meaning of samak here: sustain, uphold, support me, God, and then I can live. I can revive. According to your word, your promise. And do not let me be disappointed, and then be shamed. If the promise fails, then we'll be shamed. So he's saying, God, according to your promise, let me rise up. Let your promise. Be fulfilled. Otherwise, we'll be shamed, because you have promised God, so you will sustain me. This promise will be fulfilled. That's the faith of the psalmist in God's promise. He believes that when God has、um, set up His commands and promised us, He will not fail us. God is a Jaira, God of Jaira, Jehovah Jaira. He will provide. He's a mighty one. He will not let his promise fail us. First one one seven. Uphold me, and I will be delivered. I will always have regard for your decrees. So again, he's saying, "Oh Lord, uphold me, uphold me, support me, so I can be delivered, so I can live." And then I will not be shamed. And I will be saved. And I will always have regard for your laws, your decrees. Then your decrees and law will be honored by men. So that's the cry of the psalmist to God. He knows God well. He knows that God is the one who sustains him, and the one who provides for him. So in this situation, he's crying out to God. First one one eight. You which are all who stray from your decrees, for their deceitfulness is in vain. Those who reject you, 
or go astray from your law, from your word, you just let them be. You despise them. You let them be because of their deceitfulness, and the deceitfulness will surely come to vain. They have gone astray from God's way, and they attack God's servants. But God would not even look at these people because their deceitfulness is in vain. They want to harm God's people. God knows everything that the wicked plan. But God would not be concerned because the deceitfulness will be in vain. God will not even look at them. So today, if ungodly men laugh at us, mock us, we do not need to be bothered by them. We don't need to be affected by them because their attacks will come to vain. Only God is our dwelling place. We don't need to be afraid of the attack. Says my, all the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Therefore, I love your statutes. Those wicked people are、uh, ungodly people. The proud, the ones who think they are that there is no God. They do wicked, evil things. If God wants to destroy them, it's easy. He can dis just discard them like dross. Dross is useless. So in the end, we'll just throw it away, trash it. These people, they think they are powerful. But if God wants to remove them, it's very easy. Just like discarding the drawers, they are these wicked people are useless. God can protect us and is powerful, and so the psalmist says, God can remove them easily. And so I love your statues. I love your testimonies. What does it mean? Because God has removed Israelites, the 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 enemies of the Israelites, many of them in history. In the end, everyone who opposed the Israelites were actually opposing God. When they shame and insult the Israelites, they're actually insulting God. And when this proud rulers came to attack Israelites, they threw rubber. He came and insulted people of God. But within 24 hours, God intervened, and he had to live in shame. So the psalmist will call all these works of God. And he knows that God is really the one who can protect Is Israel, who can sustain them. And first, one hundred twenty. My flesh trembles in fear of you. I stand in awe of your laws. 
trembles in fear, in awe of God. God has done mighty, wonderful things in Israel. And he said, "I will fear you so much that his flesh trembles." His whole body shakes. He fears God and fears God's judgment. In this wicked man, they face judgment. When God, when the psalmist recalls God's judgment, the fear of God arises in him. And actually, that's also a kind of faith in God. God's judgment is also God's words, is God's miracles. The miracles are the foundation of the psalmist faith. So they become the support for the psalmist and sustains him and strengthens him to continue to walk with God. I like Psalm 119 because every alphabet is very meaningful. And、uh, each paragraph is written according to the meaning of the alphabet. If you still remember the fourteenth alphabet, Nun, which represents faithfulness and faith, and today Samak represents support. And so, faith and support together, would, what, what would that be? Fourteen and fifteenth alphabet. When it's combined together, it means Nash, which means miracle. So, faith plus support equals miracles, which means miracles support our faith, and our faith support miracles. So, in Hebrew,、uh, Nash it means miracle. If we hold on to faith, miracles will appear. And, and God's words and miracles, testimonies, are the miracles, and we need to get to know God through the miracles. We need to love the Word of God because when God speaks, it will come to pass. He is our refuge, our protection. He has a covenant and promise with us, which will never fail. God will lead us with signs and miracles. Next paragraph. First one, two, one, two, one, two, eight. Next alphabet is iron. It's the sixteenth alphabet. It's very interesting. Noon plus samak plus iron together. What do they mean? Iron means the eye. You can see. So miracles help people to see. Iron it means eye or vision. It, uh, word time also has this alphabet iron, or the word hour or future, past, moment, eternity. All these words have the alphabet iron. 
So from the Hebrew words, we can see that time is related to vision. It's also scientific. How do we get time today? It depends on the sun shining on the earth. The shadow, the sun, or the ray of the sun will help us see. So iron is related to time. And what is the first word in this paragraph in Hebrew, which starts with the alphabet iron? I cannot find the Chinese word, but we look at the English version translation. Especially in New King James, it says, "I have done justice and righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors." So I have done in Hebrew. It starts with iron. In Chinese, it means I have done also. I've completed. So do not leave me to my oppressors, because I've done what is righteous and just. I have experienced. I have seen what is righteous and justice. So Lord, do not leave me to my oppressors. It says because I have seen and have experienced what is righteous and just. The psalmist says, "Do not leave me to the ones who attack me, because I know you are righteous and just. I have experienced and seen your justice and righteousness. So help me to continue to stay in justice and righteousness." Also, ensure your servants' well-being. Let not the arrogant oppress me. Help me, sustain me, to hold on to all your goodness. Let not the arrogant oppress me. So they cannot plot against me or attack me. The arrogant are in the same party as the wicked. They do not know God. They are proud. They think they are higher than God. And the psalm is saying, "Let them not oppress me. My eyes fell looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promise." You see the word eyes here. What does that mean? What is the righteous promise? Or the righteous word? It means all the promises that you have promised us. Some says, "I look for your promise and your salvation," and then my eyes fell. What does that mean? If we see the Israelites rabbi, how do they explain this verse? They will say, "My eyes pin on your salvation and promise." It doesn't mean that our eyes cannot see, but our eyes are like the nail pinning on. Your salvation and promise, so I cannot see anything else. I cannot see anything else except your salvation and promise. So my eyes pin on this. Your salvation is. Promise, and I cannot see anything else apart from God. Salvation and promise, I cannot see anything else. That's the meaning of this verse. So, 
the psalmist really values God's promise and salvation. I don't care about any other things. I will only look at this until it fulfills. And the first one, twenty-four. Deal with your servant according to your love, and teach me your decrees. So treat me according to your kindness, and teach me your law, your Torah. So I can see clearly your word, your Torah, and then I can follow it. And that is God's kindness. To say, I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes. Give me discernment. It means also give me understanding. So I can know your statutes. I can know your testimonies. What does it mean to understand? If we understand something, we say we say in English, "I see," which means I understand. So give me discernment, help me see and know and understand your works. Open our eyes so we can see the works of God. When we are facing difficulties, we need to cry out to God like that to open our eyes so we can see God's works. When we see God's works, we understand the whole picture, and then our life is no longer the same. Bert and I have been through a difficult time when we, the second time we had the miscarriage of a twin. At that time, I wanted to comfort Loretta, but my words didn't help. I couldn't comfort her because actually I myself also need to pick up my own faith, and I still remember because she was resting. Uh, she didn't go to work at at the time. The TV broadcasted a very old Christian movie. God's design. A、uh, one conversation opened up Loretta's eyes. It says, "Life is like、uh, playing a puzzle." In the past, we have put puzzles together with beautiful colors, but sometimes we are holding on to a puzzle which is dark, totally black, and then you're holding it, and then we ask God, "Why is there no way out? Why is there totally dark?" He says. We have to wait until one day, when we go back to heaven, then we understand that that place of the picture needs to be dark. Otherwise, the whole picture would not be beautiful. At that time, her spiritual eyes were opened. She could see the works of God. She could see that God has accompanied her. In that time, and then her faith re returns back. But God comforted me in a different way. He showed me another picture which is different from Loretta. I thought I've lost four children already. God showed me when I go back to heaven one day, when the When heaven's door is open, I will see four children will come to me. They will run to embrace me, and I know that I have not lost them. They are just in heaven right now. We see two different pictures, but when God has opened our eyes and we see His works, then our faith will be different. So. The psalmist is saying, "I'm your servant. 
So give me discernment, so that I may understand your statutes, your works. I will translate to give me discernment, that I may see your works. First one twenty six. It's time for you to act, O Lord. Your law is being broken. It's time that Lord, you will punish. In the difficult time, a time of darkness, maybe a time that God is punishing, because people have departed from His law, from the tree of life, and so it's a time for judgment. God will judge. So it says, because I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold. Because I see your works, I understand your works. Therefore, I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold. God's words and commands are more precious than gold, more beautiful. That's why I say we need to really see that God's words and commands are good and beautiful. And because I consider all your precepts right, I hate every wrong path. God has given us boundaries, and I have to regard it as right and valuable. And then we、we'll、hate every wrong path. We can discern what is wrong, what fake. That's our spiritual eyes. When we、uh, open up. Like we can see the word of God, we can discern what is right or wrong, and that would hate evil. We do not like what is fake. Like I give you money, if you do not know how to discern it, fine. But if you realize it, that I've given you a something fake, you be. Upset, you will hate that. So the psalmist is saying, our eyes need to be opened. We need to see what is wrong and wicked, so we can love what is godly and hate what is ungodly, and then we won't won't have. Double mind. May the Lord help us so we can see God's words, to understand what kind of God He is, and then if we see that our life will be full of miracles. God is our refuge, our shield. He will protect us. So let's praise the Lord and thank Him. He is the source of justice and righteousness. He is our refuge and protection. He is righteous and upright. So we praise him for that. Lord, your church comes before you and give you thanks today because you are righteous. You are just. You are protecting us through your word. We love your word. The spirit of truth come to us so that we can be rooted in your word. In this twisted generation,、uh, Lord, when you you are judging and punishing, protect us. Thank you in Jesus' name. I wonder if you will think, oh, it's Psalm nine one one nine, it's the same thing again. But thank Pastor for going, helping us go deeper through Hebrew language and this chaotic generation. Just say、like、the pastor said earlier, what our days are, our strength will be, and now. Life in this world, in this time of chaos, God will help us through Psalm 119. Maybe you feel that oh, it's the same, but I really see that in the morning devotion, as we love His Word, 
God has been leading 6111 until today, and 6111 has a lot of core values. A lot of people, especially、uh, even Christians, cannot、um, understand the priorities. Said Sia, I hate double-minded men, but I love your law. Double-minded. I believe this. I believe that today in the society, it doesn't mean only Christians or non-Christians. Even Christians, we need to ask God to protect us that we won't be double-minded. It is. It means double-minded means having.、Um, It's not pure, but mixed with different things. Even Christians、uh, we have purities. May the Lord help us and wash us today through His Word. By His Word, open our eyes. I encourage everyone. Today, when you're sitting here or you're online, we can have a heart to seek God and say, "Lord, can you give us this Psalm 119? You will give us hope and promise in the time of chaos and oppression when people." Abolish the law of God when men abolish the tree of life. May this Psalm 119 becomes our hope. May the Lord open our eyes so we can see. So I encourage you all. Now, use one two one two one two eight to pray. Pray through the word first. One, two, one, two, one, two, eight. In our spirit, we pray in truth, and we pray in spirit and truth. May the word of God, love of God, we ask Him to give to us. Let's pray first. May the Lord help us. Lord, I we thank you. Because you are just. And righteous, your works are upright. Lord, today, every day, everyone, especially your church, you send us to central to become a lamp stand. Whether we are co-workers or cell leaders, we are cell members. Lord, help us. In this time of God's judgment, when people abolish your law, Lord, help us to align ourselves again, so we can have a righteous heart. When we have gone astray, when we have double mind, when we're double minded, help us, adjust us. When we're oppressed, through your word. We ask that you give us hope again, and fix our hope. Pin on your promise. Open our eyes, spiritual eyes. When we're still facing difficulties, we cannot resolve. There are a lot of problems in Hong Kong we cannot understand, and we would just want to run away. There are many problems in the world we feel discouraged and disappointed. Lord. As we pray through Your Word, open our eyes so we can see You, to see Your will, to see Your will and Your calling. Lord, we thank You. We welcome You, Holy Spirit. We desire Your Word and want to be rooted in Your Word. May our hearts be good, a good piece of land. A good soil, let your word be planted in us, so that we can grow up 
and be mature and become a tree of life. Lord, thank you. Hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So, with a heart, a thirsty heart, let's pray. Read this words, verse one to one to one to eight. Sustain us according to your word that we can live. When our lives depend on you and your salvation and promise, we believe you will not let us be disappointed. Those who wait on you will not be shamed. Lord, sustain us. Uphold us. So we can be saved. We can focus on your word, your law, because we know all deceitfulness and is in vain, and you hate all double-mindedness. Everything will be in vain. You will remove them because you're the God of judgment, Lord. We fear you. We fear you. We fix our eyes on your works. We fix our eyes on your works. Lord, come and see our hearts. If we have any double-mindedness, are we in the church? But we also have a lot of our own opinions. That have gone astray from you. That we have gone astray from your tree of life. Oh Lord, purify us and forgive us, help us, because you remove all the wicked on earth. Lord, we see and we are fearful. So we say we love your word. And your commands, your statutes, your precepts, in everything we consider your laws righteous. We love your word more than gold, more than pure gold. Now I want to invite you to put the Bible on your heart. We have some time and ask the Lord to help us. In all the conflicts of the world, where there's tree of not 
knowledge of good and evil will tell the Lord, "I love your word. I love your tree of life." With the core values of the Bible, where there's freedom, with there's self-control, with lo- more love and more trust. Relationship before ministry, we tell the Lord, we want to stand firm in your word. We want to stand firm in your principles. There are many voices in the wor- world which try to. Influence your church, but help your churches stand firm. Lord, help us. We thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for planting us here in Central Shanghai. May everyone know your Lord. Lord, help us take away all our double-mindedness and impurities. In this wicked and twisted generation, we can witness you. Be your witness and witness your. Be a testimony to your words. Let your church become a lampstand that shines for you. Thank you, Lord. Protect us, guide us, and hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We did a Psalm 119, first one to five. It says, "I'm your servant. Give me discernment, so I know I may understand your statutes. I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes." May the Lord help us. So everyone, we can see, we can see we are the servant of God. May the Lord help us to understand and see clearly the works of God. May the Lord open our eyes so we can see His works. It's above all things we see the work of God in all the difficulties and fears and troubles. We see the work of God. Because we are His servant, help us. May the Lord give us grace so we can have such understanding, discernment, so we can see God's words. If you are in the midst of troubles, if you do, there's a lot of things you cannot understand. I pr- I invite you to put your hands on your eyes. Go into the spirit and ask God give you understanding and discernment. Open your spiritual eyes to see in times of difficulties, and you feel lost. You can still see the work of God, to recognize the work of God, to see that God is the one who takes care of us and protect us. We pray in the spirit and ask the Lord to help us, ask Him to open up our spiritual eyes. Pray in tongues. Open our eyes so we can see your works. Open our spiritual eyes so we can see your face. Even though we cannot see you with our eyes, but open our spiritual eyes so we can see. You, we can really know you, Lord. Let our faith increase in you, even though we may not understand. But we want to see your works. We see you beyond the mist, above the clouds, like the sun's never changing. Lord, today we look upon you. Give us faith. Increase our faith. Take away all our doubts and our unbeliefs. In Jesus' name, may the Lord pour out the Holy Spirit on our heart. In our hearts, lay your hands on our eyes, so we can really see. We can really understand you, because we are your servant. We will serve you. We want to walk your path. 
so we must understand your words, and we can surely see you. And then we can love your word more than pure gold. Lord, we regard all your words as good and beautiful. Open our spiritual eyes so that we can see through eyes of faith. Fix our eyes on you, so all the difficulties and troubles will not take away our peace in our heart. Lord, help us to see your work, so we can get to know you more. In in Jesus' name, I bless everyone. When we can quiet down, may the word of and may the spirit of God fill us, and may the spirit of God open our spiritual eyes, so that you. Will not be disappointed. Peace will fill you. Insights will come into your heart. So all the clouds will be dispersed. All the depression and worries will leave you. All the burdens will be removed because God cares for you and He protects you. He's given you all the goodness. He is your refuge and your dwelling place and your refuge and your shield. May the Lord, the Word of God, be your help and healing. Thank you, Lord. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.